What's going on, everybody? In today's video, we're going to talk about our card shows declining or dying down. What are the reasons that this could be happening? Is it due to location? Is it due to the venues? Is it due to buyers? Is it due with the promoters, sellers, etc., etc.? Whether it's a 30 table show, 50 card show, or 50 table show, 100 table show, even a 300 table show, is the current status of today's card shows dying down? In the comment section below, whether you've gone to shows or you're just reading posts or watching videos about it, please comment so I could take a look at it because I can only speak at the shows that I've actually been to through Tennessee, Kentucky, and through Indiana. So in the past three months, I've set up at five different shows, and I've gone to shows as a buyer four different times. I've noticed a lot of different trends, and we're going to talk about that into this video, and it's going to show kind of why shows in my area are declining slash dying, however you want to word it out there. Also, I do want to talk about some stuff I've seen in recent Facebook posts before we get more in-depth into the video. And it'll make sense during the video why I'm bringing this up now. But I've noticed a lot of people have been just selling their collections off that have got in during 2020. It was expected, don't get me wrong. But they just keep piling, piling on more and more. And I mean, there's a lot of people buying it up as soon as it gets posted in these Facebook groups. But what I thought was uh, different is there was a post that went up Saturday. You know, I was like three hours short of catching it because I don't check my feeds 24-7. But I just happened to look down because it had like 100 and some comments. So I'm like, holy cow, what's going on in this one? Figured it might have been somebody trying to scam somebody out of stolen stuff. I don't know. To go through it, there was over 30 comments of people that either already have sold their collections in the process of selling their collections or are getting ready to sell their collections because they came in or they came back in during the COVID era and it's just not fun to them. They have lost their desire. Their kids are no longer interested. And again, like I said, it's not fun unless they make money, right? I mean, that's the mentality during coming in during COVID was it's fun because we're making money and, you know, we get to spend money elsewhere, do whatever we want with it. But with that there, those people leaving were losing a lot more buyers. We don't know. They could have been dealers, sellers, flippers at shows. That's going to be less foot traffic, too. So just a little bit of a background of what I've been seeing outside the card shows, which could be affecting card shows. Now, in this video, there's not going to be any kind of fancy stuff. I'm not going to have all these graphs, pie charts, and tables to bore you guys senseless out there. It's just going to be the pictures of me blabbing on about uh, different notes that I have posted in front of me. So you might catch me looking down, reading, make sure I don't lose track of where I'm at and stuff. But I promise you there's not going to be any graphs, pie charts, or any of that um, high-speed stuff going on in this video at all. So let's talk about what makes a show look like it's either dying or declining, since that's been the terminology used, I would say, relatively more in the past six months than I've seen before. Now, to understand that, if you just came into it during 2020, or say you were in the 90s, you came back in 20 years later, etc., etc., you got to look at it. Um, from somebody that's been in or from people that have been in the whole time frame, maybe they took a you know six month break here, a year off because of such such reason. But part shows themselves where I was at, we've had one show per week, you know, within maybe from where I lived at like a two hour drive. Which was good because no shows competed against each other. If you wanted to go to a show that weekend, you were making that drive there. There was no picking and choosing for dealers or sellers. At the same time frame, when COVID uh, did come into play, in my state alone, there were no shows from March through November. I almost had the last March show kick off when I was a promoter for hosting the shows down here. But City shut me down two days before, and then I was supposed to have one in, I remember it was June or July. But anyhow, I already had the whole room set up. I was setting my own stuff up night prior, you know. And the lady came in, the uh, facility manager said, hey, City just shut us down. I'm so sorry. I'm like, what? 
I gotta call all these people up, and I gotta let buyers know they're coming here. They're gonna be mad. And to me, that was like the last straw that really hit with me. I stopped doing sh uh, uh, promoting shows or hosting the shows just because of it. And it wasn't the facility's fault, you know. It was just dumb luck, dumb timing. COVID spiked up, and hey, can't do this now. But during that time frame, when that shows came back in November. I remember in some of my videos I talked about, we had 14-year-old kids walk up to me with like $3,000 cash, a stack, stack of $100 bills. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You robbed somebody? You steal that from mom or dad? And no, these kids were out there hustling away. They moved from sneakers or whatever it may be and stuff like that there, and they're ready to buy, sell, trade, flip, whatever it may be. So with what I'm talking about here coming up, I'm looking at stuff from prior to 2020 COVID stuff about shows, and I'll hit a little bit about 2020 forward just because it's going to make a little bit more sense. At least it does in my eyes. At least it does in my eyes. So to make a so successful, there's three elements that I've always said about the show, and I could be completely wrong about this, so don't hold my feet to the fire out there, buddy. But there's three elements I look at. Promoters, buyers, sellers, whether you want to be sellers is considered a dealer, seller, or flipper. You need all three of those at shows. So, with that being said, we're going to move into the first one, the promoter. The promoter's job of the show is to, one, get the venue, have a nice location, and be responsible to have it set up for everybody, open up early so people have time to come in and set up, at the same time frame, they have to do the advertising part of it all about the show, and they need to fill the tables. Most important thing, fill the tables of dealers slash sellers out there. And then, like I said, advertising to bring your buyers in. Normally, you get your sellers who have Instagram and all that post that they're coming to the show. It helps with your flow of traffic. So, a lot of people have been just destroying the promoters on shows. Now, it might be unintentional, but you cannot hold the promoter responsible for the items being sold as show and for the price that they are. That's completely different. That's on the dealer, seller, flipper themselves. So, hitting about the promoters, they have three areas of responsibility, like I said. They got to get the venue, the location, whatever you want to call it. They have to advertise their show to both get the dealers and the buyers in there. But most importantly, they got to fill those tables up. What people bring, no idea onto that there across the board. Number two, let's talk about buyers. You got to get buyers to show. You got to get some kind of foot traffic. So the responsibility of the buyer, very easy. Spend money. They got to spend money out there. Whether they are still the old-fashioned set collectors out there or just collector pre-COVID, um, the guy that wants to go out there and hustle you down to get the car as low as he can to go flip it for as high as he can and make this X amount of percentage. You got to have the, they're out there. Those guys, the buyers themselves, their responsibility is to get to the show, find cards they want, buy them, and then it helps change inventory around completely out there. Now, the issue being pre COVID, you know. You build a lot of relationships with as a buyer with your dealers out there because they got to know you and vice versa. And they'll be like, oh, man, I remember talking to this guy. and He was all in Nolan Ryan's. I'm going to bring like 50 of them next time with me. And hopefully he shows up type deal. And then in return, that buyer shows up. And be like, oh, you got Nolan Ryan's for me. Cool. I'll buy them all. So, again, buyers, they're responsible to, you know, find the shows, go out there, buy cards, spend money. Pretty easy. During COVID-19, through 2022-ish, we had a lot of uh, influx out there, promotion of the sports card industry, and a lot of people, you know, knew who Gary V was, and they wanted to get rich like Gary V. Not happening. I mean, what, maybe 5% total got rich like Gary V, but it's because they had a ton of money originally, and they were in some kind of maybe secret phone call meeting that went on. And hint, I heard Mr. Beast talking about one <laughs> on somebody's YouTube channel, so I know they go on. But they had a lot of money to make and so forth to spend. They made a lot of money with him. 
that's what happens, you know. You got the right connections, the right hookups, it happens across the board. Uh, for people that were in it before all the COVID madness and the bubble, you know, they've seen trends like this makes no sense. I'm selling now, and they held their money. They're still holding money today because they're not too sure where we're gonna bottom out at. All right, let me pull Gary V down. I'm getting distracted looking at Gary V on my screen, but. That's pretty much, you know, the piece of it all. If you, as a buyer, if you're going in there looking to make a ton of money off of cards, that's part of the reason why, you know, the shows are slower and decline down because the buyers are finding better deals online, whether it's eBay, MySlabs, ComC, whatever, where they can negotiate and not have to sit there and have that personal interaction with people. It's it just... I know a lot of people like it. They're like, I'm tired of going to shows, having to deal with these dealers. I'll just do my stuff online, you know, make offers. They accept it. They accept it and move on. Like, huh, interesting. You know, there's no personal bond being built, you know, between two people over the Internet. It's, it's a little bit harder for me. Maybe for the younger people, you'll probably argue the fact there is. To me, I just seen so much bad out there. It's kind of hard for me to always say I'm going to meet, you know, out of 100 people, you know, 90 of them are going to turn out good on the internet. Just one of those things. But, all right, guys. We're going to move on to part number three here. And let me just flip screens here real quick. Boom. Buy our sellers. Sellers. So, let's talk about dealers, sellers, and flippers. It shows. There's three, three labels that have been used out there. Uh, to me, a dealer, somebody that's licensed, has licensing, is going to have to pay all the sales tax, yada, yada, yada. Sellers, they're just out to sell. Flippers, hey, you guys know what that is. Not even going into that. So, with dealers of the show, could it be that we're setting up to have show and tell and not moving on prices because we paid too much into it? Is that the reason why it's the client? Could be. Because I can tell you now, when I was Midwest Monster, I've walked by probably about at least a dozen tables, if not more, where I've overheard somebody saying they're not going to budge on their prices because they're in too much and they believe it's going to go blah, 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 blah. And I've moved right on. They even look at anything else they're telling like, eh, not for me. If I had that reaction, how many other people would have had that reaction to show and just breeze by? And after you start hearing so much, you start thinking, well, it's going to be every single freaking person at the show. It just starts turning bad overall with it. With that being said, if the dealers are going from show to show all in local areas and their inventory is not changing, I might come by and say hello, but I see the same cards there. You know, you have that, you know, hey, how you doing? Everything going good? You don't even know what you glance real quick. It's like, oh, not new. I'm just going to keep moving. Inventory. You're not changing out inventory, or your inventory is the same as 90% of the other people. Your show is not going to be success. It's going to be like, oh, I'm not going to another show there. It's all the same stuff. Especially if you're new in the hobby and your first experience is that. Are you going to want to go back? No, it means less foot traffic means car shows declining or they're dying down. And by dying down, it's because all three promoters are going to get, you know, ticked off that they're not getting the foot traffic, they're not like getting negative reviews and stuff on the internet, even though some of the stuff's out of their control. You know, dealers, sellers, flippers, buyers across the board. It, it it's just gonna end up leading to less foot traffic across the board, less people selling at shows and resorting to either going online or hey, buy me out. Or I'm gonna just pass it on to my grandkids. They're three years old now. They can have it in 15 years. I don't know. Something like that there. Uh, let's see. Just make sure I hit all my notes here. The other part I want to hit with uh, both sellers and buyers is a kind of combined comment. We talked about this a little bit. Is they're all now relying to do the stuff online. They're realizing that if I'm going to go as a dealer to a big show, I'm going to have to spend a couple hundred dollars on my table rental. I got paid for transportation air, and if I have to fly, that's even more money. Food, gas, hotel. So as a person that wants to make money, I'm already in $1,000 I got to sell before the show even opens up just to recount myself. Do I really want to set these shows? I can just do this on eBay, right? 15% fees, easy, comes out of my stuff. Don't have to worry about 
seeing the negative right off the bat, or I can do it on my slabs. Uh, the one percent fee, I believe, still. Uh, I could, you know, cut it off the PWCC to sell for me golden DC sports, whatever it may be. A lot less of a hassle. I don't have to spend as much money going to these things. Heck, if I want to get a group of my friends together, I'll go open up my garage. We'll go have a trade night in my garage. We can drink beer. Or, you know, we could all pitch in and get a hotel conference room a lot cheaper and all that. There's just a lot of people that are now thinking that across the board. And I, I mean, this is honestly what I talked about with probably about seven, eight different new dealers at the Midwest Monster I've ever had any communication with. And their thoughts were exactly the same. Why am I spending all this money coming in here and I gotta pretty much hurry up, make my thousand dollars just to break back even to be here? Then I gotta make profit. So basically, you know, the first thousand dollars I sell, it's in the hole. I explained to them that's why I don't do the big shows unless I was gonna start bringing out, you know, fifteen to fifty thousand dollar cards, and I know they're gonna sell, you know, like something like at the national. Because otherwise, I'm already in a big hole. I'd rather go spend, you know, 20 to $35 on a table, let my value boxes pay for that and my gas, go in there anyhow to buy, hey, see if I can sell or make some trades too. But I think that's going to be one of the bigger reasons you're going to see some of the bigger shows eventually taper down across the board is that a lot of people that came in and had these big expectations of this being a long, longer term run than what a lot of us knew was already too long to begin with, they're going to move away, so there's going to be extra tables eventually out there. Some of these big businesses, I mean, are going to be gone because they're not going to be able to get product in. Um, shops will end up shutting down and set up at these shows or sponsor these shows. They're going to probably go away, too, if they can't. Get squared away with fanatics getting inventory in. A lot to think about overall when you start looking at why are card shows declining and dying. It, in my opinion, they are because your foot traffic's going away. And I, when I say foot traffic, it's just not the buyers. Your dealers are not coming back to shows. You're getting less and less flippers out there, which always amused me the flippers come to the tables, even when they're like 12 years old trying to hustle you and stuff. But all that stuff's going to be in play. Eventually, promoters will be like, man, I can't even break even on the um, room rental here. What's the point of doing this anymore? It's costing me more money than I make. It's a lot of headaches setting that stuff up. So I think over the course of the next year or two, we're going to start seeing a lot more shows going away due to headaches. The other issue... With promoters, I didn't really talk about in the beginning, and I do apologize this. If you're a promoter of the show, I want you to comment in the comments below. How many people do you have canceled within the morning of or the day, two days? I'll give it up to two days prior to the show. I can tell you I've always had people call me. Now, I understand you're on your way and you pop a tire or get in an accident or... Your mom's in a hospital. I got that stuff. But there's people who ghost you, don't even show up, don't even care, won't respond to your messages. If you're a promoter, put down the comments down there because I'm curious. I mean, when I was doing mine pre-COVID, I'd say 10 to 15% would end up doing it. From people that I know that run shows now, 20 to 25% are ghosting them without any messages, any care, not at all. And when you have those open tables up, and then you start seeing your buyers walking in like, whoa, where's all the other dealers at? Again, they're not going to want to come back, which means less foot traffic for the shows. And eventually a lot of this stuff's going to die down to where you were able to go out and build rapport with people. And, you know, the dealer that travels to Chicago, uh, Virginia, Ohio, that would normally be out there buying, like, say, Michael Jordan's for me. He's no longer doing it because of this. So now I have one less avenue of finding stuff and getting it at reasonable prices off of somebody that I met at a show. But wanted to bring some of this stuff up to everybody to see what are exactly are your opinions out there on it. Do you think the card shows are dying and decline? I do because of what I see in my area. I think it's going on everywhere else because of what I read, see, and hear from other areas across the board. That the attendance is down, there's less dealers, they're overpriced. Pretty much everything that we've come across here. 
And if you really think about it, the more people that walk away from the hobby and either stop coming into shows or just get out of it completely means there's less money for sales, which means less cards are moving. At the same time, from there's some cards that won't ever move because we've locked them up in vaults or they're now fractionalized where somebody owns 0.00001% of that card. Um, I, I forget, fractionalization of cards. There's a, there's a few companies out there that still do it. All right, guys. Pretty much it for the video. No, it's a little bit longer than normal, but I took a lot of notes onto this stuff because of uh, some of the comments and emails and talks I had about the monster. And maybe I wasn't really, uh, really clear that I don't blame the people that are promoting the events. I mean, there's certain things like, hey, you have a concession building. They should be having concessions all day long. And stuff like that there. And yeah, that's for the promoter. But it by no means is... He filled his tables up, you know, and all that stuff. You can't blame promoters for that. As a whole, it takes everybody, all those elements together, in my own opinion, to make shows successful, talk about, and to keep that momentum going across the board. At the same time frame, we're not like we used to be to where shows could be close. To, if they were three shows in just Louisville, I think people would bounce around. But when you're... In an area that's about an hour to an hour and a half from location to location, those people live in the middle, you're dividing them up. You got to think about that stuff. If you're trying to compete, like I'm going to take all the people from that show down there and bring them on, that's the wrong thing right now because eventually both people, their host those shows, are going to get upset. Maybe they walk away. Now there's no more shows in that area. Maybe start working together. You know, on dates. I don't know. There's all kind of possibilities that cross my mind when I start thinking about this stuff. But again, thank you everybody uh, for watching the videos. I appreciate you listening to me ramble on and on about stuff. But in my opinion, yes, they are declining and dying. It may not be everybody's opinion because of where you live, what you see going on. And please, like I said, comment below. And as always, if you are not subscribed to the channel, go head down there, hit that subscribe button. And I do appreciate it. I will see you guys next video.